It's time for another mailbox episode with yours truly. This time, I'm going to answer your questions as to whether or not certain athletes currently playing and those who are retired deserve to be Hall of Famers. Remember, this is my opinion and you asked for it, so if you get angry, you only have yourself to blame. Let's begin. Jimmy Butler, pretty much the catalyst for the Heat's playoff runs the last few seasons. I would say that Jimmy Butler is a Hall of Famer, even though the Basketball Hall of Fame has a lot lower standards than football and baseball especially. Although I do think he would be a definite lock if he was able to win a championship, but I do think he is a Hall of Fame player on the lower end though. He's not an inner circle legend. Marcus Colston, six seasons with over 1,000 yards. Marcus Colston, not a Hall of Famer. Typical Hall of very good player. Playing with Breeze, I think helped him. But he was never a dominant player and at position of wide receiver, you need to be dominant in order to have a chance to make it. And even though Colston might've been underrated, he was never dominant and so he is not a Hall of Famer to me. Bob Sanders, a safety who played in the NFL for eight seasons. Bob Sanders was a Hall of Fame player when he was on the field. Unfortunately, the guy was never healthy. He might be the single most injury-prone athlete. I know everyone makes fun of Anthony Davis and Kawhi Leonard and all these other guys for being injury-prone, but Bob Sanders is the most injury-prone athlete. But when he was on the field playing, he was a Hall of Famer, but he's also not a Hall of Famer because he barely played. I know you don't do a lot of baseball stuff, but what about Zach Grinke? Grinke He's a Hall of Famer, 225 wins, 77 and a half war, got a Cy Young, bunch of gold gloves, ERA titles. He might be a weirdo. He lost a couple World Series, which he pitched well in, but he is a Hall of Famer. First ballot? I don't know, but he should get in on the first or second ballot. LaShawn McCoy, one of the best running backs of the 2010s. This is actually a tough one for me because I do feel like McCoy, his numbers are better than what you'd expect. He had over 11,000 yards rushing, 73 rushing touchdowns touchdowns, two-time All-Pro, six-time Pro Bowler, catch the ball out of the backfield. He was also incredible to watch during his prime. I think talent-wise, he was a Hall of Famer. I just feel like his sample size, he needed maybe a couple more good seasons to be a Hall of Famer, and he didn't have that. So he just barely misses out for me, which pains me to say as an Eagles fan. Eric Berry was an All-Pro safety before and after his battle with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Eric Berry, similar to Bob Sanders in the sense that he, as you alluded to, he missed some time with cancer. He missed some time with other injuries. He was a Hall of Fame caliber player when he was on the field, but he just did not play enough, in my opinion, to be considered a Hall of Famer. That's the difference. Hall of Fame talent versus a Hall of Fame career. He was a Hall of Fame talent. He did not have a Hall of Fame career. Sean Alexander, most underrated running back ever. 100 touchdowns scored, not in the Hall of Fame. Alexander, not a Hall of Famer. He was exposed pretty badly after 2005 because he had a great offensive line, Walter Jones, Steve Hutchinson, and he scored a lot of goal line touchdowns. He was kind of soft. Statistically, he might be a Hall of Famer, but this is just me going off the eye test. He was not a Hall of Famer to me. He's the Hall of Very Good, not a Hall of Famer. Antonio Brown, four-time first team All-Pro. Now, this is the exact opposite. There is absolutely zero fucking way Antonio Brown is ever going to make the Hall of Fame thanks to the last three or four years off the field. But he is, without question, one of the best receivers to ever play the game, and he was a dominant player. He is one of the five or six best receivers. When he was at his best, He's one of the five or six best players to ever play his position. So he, in my opinion, is a Hall of Fame football player, but he will never get in there. But he is a Hall of Famer to me. As a Bengals fan, A.J. Green. That's a tough one. Green really got off to a good start in his career, first five years. I just don't think he had enough of a sample size to get into Hall of Fame. He really seemed to fall off around 2016, 2017. He has just barely over 10,000 yards, 70 touchdowns. I know he didn't have great quarterback, which is something worth in his favor, but he is one of those Hall of Very Good receivers. Never had that one dominant season, really, so he is not a Hall of Famer, in my opinion. Roger Craig, the most underrated piece of the 49ers dynasty. You look up Craig's stats, he's got over 8,000 rushing yards, 56 touchdowns. As you said, he was one of the best receiving backs of his era. Was a good player, made first team All Pro in 88, four Pro Bowls. Was a big part of the 49ers dynasty. Again, I don't think he's a Hall of Famer, though, and I think a big reason for that is Baron not the fumble in the 1990 NFC Championship game because for all the good things that he did, he won three rings with the 49ers, but you could say, well, he basically threw away another ring for him in 1990, threw away their chance at a three-peat, and he was a well-rounded back, but he didn't have enough volume stats to really get into the Hall of Fame. Another Hall of Very Good player, not a Hall of Famer. Sterling Sharp. As I said earlier, if you want to be a Hall of Famer to me, as a wide receiver, you need to be dominant, and most of the time, if you're a receiver, you've only played seven years like Sharp 
drafted? My answer would be no. But you look at what he did when he was playing. He led the league in catches three times, yards once. He caught 18 touchdowns his last year. He led the league in touchdowns twice. He was a truly dominant special player. He should be in the Hall of Fame, and we all know he would be had he not gotten hurt. Frank Gore. I was a little younger when he played, but I remember him being a game wrecker. Gore is basically the opposite of Sharp. Sterling Sharp was dominant when he played. Gore played forever. Never really dominant. In my opinion, Gore is not a Hall of Famer. And I know that sounds crazy because he's, what, second or third all time in rushing yards. He will get into the Hall of Fame. But to me, he was not a Hall of Fame running back. I don't ever remember ever watching him play and going, wow, this is a Hall of Famer. That just, fair or not, that just wasn't, I never got that feeling with Frank Gore. He's kind of like the running back version of Philip Rivers. Barry, do you think Eli Manning deserves the Hall of Fame? Is Eli Manning a Hall of Fame quarterback? No, he wasn't. He wasn't. And I, I know that sounds strange as somebody who hates Tom Brady. He's talking about a guy who beat Tom Brady and outplayed him twice in the Super Bowl. But simply put, Eli Manning was a mediocre quarterback. He is going to make the Hall of Fame because he has the rings and he has the last name and he played forever for the counting stats. But if you're talking about a throw-by-throw -throw basis, he's not a Hall of Fame quarterback. He was an average quarterback who played forever. Chad Ochocinco Johnson, 766 receptions, 11,000 plus yards all time, and 67 touchdowns. Is Chad, no, Chad Johnson's not a Hall of Fame receiver. I think he needed a couple more years. He did have that two or three year stretch in the mid 2000s where he was looking on pace to be a Hall of Famer, but he really kind of declined quickly. Basically, his peak was great, but it wasn't dominant enough like a Sterling Sharp where you can get in with the lack of sample size. So Chad Johnson's another one of those Hall of Very Good receivers who falls shy of the Hall of Fame for me. Drew Bledsoe, retired with top 10 passing stats in most of the major categories. Bledsoe, not a Hall of Famer. He was a value merchant. His efficiency was never that great. He was a terrible postseason quarterback. He's literally one of the worst playoff quarterbacks ever. He was basically a worse prototype of Matthew Stafford. First overall pick, monster arm, but he just wasn't, he was not a great quarterback, especially in the playoffs. So he's not a Hall of Famer. And also him getting injured led to the worst 20 years in the NFL history outside of 2017. Chauncey Billups. Billups, uh, he's going to make the Hall of Fame based on the NBA standards. To me, I don't think he's a Hall of Famer. Again, I think he would be a Hall of Very Good point guard. To me, I think the Basketball Hall of Fame is so lax with their rules who gets in. People bitch about the Baseball Hall of Fame being too strict, but to me, that's one of the few things I think baseball's actually gotten right. The Hall of Fame should be difficult to get into. There, there should not be a lot of people in the Hall of Fame. So to me, I think if you want to be a Hall of Famer, you need to be like one of the best of the best. And Billups was, was very good, maybe even great for a few years. He was never a dominant player. Still as many finals MVPs as Steph Curry though, which is a great trolling thing for me to do. Reggie Wayne had a great prime and was still putting up 1,000 yard seasons after Peyton left. Reggie Wayne is a Hall of Famer. He is on the lower end of the Hall of Fame receivers, but he was just consistent, has the sample size, and as you said, was putting up 1,000 yard seasons after Peyton. So he wasn't just a Peyton merchant. He is a Hall of Famer. London Fletcher, similar stats to Ray Lewis, although it did take London more games to get there. No offense to Ray Allen. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't sit and watch every single rep of London Fletcher's career. Statistically, you would say, well, he probably deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. So you wonder why didn't he make more Pro Bowls and more All-Pro teams? I'm going to say he's not a Hall of Famer because he was on that Rams team that allowed the Patriots to win it all in 2001. So fuck him. I would like to see you do Joey Votto or Joe Maurer. Well, let's hold on a second. First of all, I need their consent. And then I'd probably need a couple drinks and a lot of lubricant. Oh, you mean, you, oh, okay, never mind. Joey Votto, he will be a Hall of Famer. He's got a 400 on base percentage lifetime. He's got just, he's got that range, like he's in the high 60s in the war. He's won an MVP, so he will be a Hall of Famer. Joe Maurer, I know he's got an MVP, a couple batting titles. His counting stats are a little bit light, but I do think Maurer will get in the Hall of Fame, but just barely. Both of them, I would say, are Hall of Famers, but lower tier Hall of Famers. Adam Wainwright, not a Hall of Famer. Hall of Very Good. Played forever. Had a couple good seasons, but he's not a Hall of Famer. Hall of Very Good. Mike Evans has had nine straight 1,000-yard seasons and probably will have another one this year. Evans, I think, is looking to have sort of a similar career to Reggie Wayne where they never really had that one dominant season, but they were so consistent for so long and their counting stats were so amazing that they, it's an obvious choice for them to get in. So Mike Evans, I do feel like, is a Hall of Famer, although I don't don't think he's even the best receiver from his draft class 2014 that belongs to Devontae Adams but Mike Evans I do think will be a Hall of Famer and deserves to be a Hall of Famer. Dick Sherman one of the best corners of the 2010s. I think Sherman will get into the Hall of Fame. I don't think he was as 
good as a guy like Revis, but Revis didn't really have that long of a prime, and it's kind of the standard now for cornerbacks, I think, is, is what Revis did. I think Richard Sherman maybe had a couple more good years. He wasn't as dominant as Revis was. He didn't travel the entire field the way Revis did. He stayed to one side of the field, and that hurts him, in my opinion, but I do think he will make the Hall of Fame, and he was arguably the best cornerback or one of the two or three best cornerbacks in the league for a four or five year period. So to me, that is a position where that warrants Hall of Fame status. Derrick Henry, generational player who is always a threat for a big play. I think if he stays healthy, he's on pace to be a Hall of Famer. One of the very few running backs left who you can still probably say that. I know that the standard for Hall of Fame running backs is kind of all over the place. I think if Terrell Davis made the Hall of Fame, I think Derrick Henry deserves to make the Hall of Fame. Also got a 2,000 yard season. He's led the league in rushing multiple times. He, to me, is on track to be a Hall of Famer if he stays healthy. James Harrison, some people think he is, others don't. I would say Harrison is a Hall of Very Good player. I know that he won a couple Super Bowls. He had that famous interception return in Super Bowl 43. He was also a really terrifying human, just really scary. He was a late bloomer, though. He really didn't break out until 2007. I don't think his prime was long enough as a defensive end to make the Hall of Fame. I just don't. I think he's a Hall of Very Good player. I hope he does not come after me because I say that. Steve Tasker, considered by many one of the, if not the best special teams players of all time. No. As you will find out shortly, I have a heavy bias against special teams players because if you're so fucking good, why are you not an every down player? I don't understand this mindset people have about letting great special teams players in the Hall of Fame. It's almost like, why do these very good every down players get leapfrogged by players who aren't even good enough to play on every down? Steve Tasker's not a Hall of Famer. He was great at what he does, or what he did rather, but no, come on. If you're not an every down player, you're not a Hall of Famer in my opinion. That goes for kickers and punters too. I know that's kind of a controversial opinion, but that's my opinion. What about Julian Edelman? No, Julian Edelman is not a Hall of Famer, but I'll say this. I will say that he does get underrated and overrated simultaneously by Brady fans. As somebody who watched his entire career, he might not be a Hall of Famer, but every fucking big play, whenever a big play was needed, this motherfucker was wide open for Tom Brady. And he does have a lot of big playoff stats. The regular season, he had a late start. He backed up Welker. You know, he kind of had some injuries. Never made a Pro Bowl. He, when he was healthy, he was a great player, but it just didn't have the sample size in the regular season to warrant Hall of Fame status. Not a Hall of Famer, but a very good player and certainly better than the quote unquote no weapons label that some Brady fans give him. Donovan McNabb, my favorite athlete growing up and the reason why I'm an Eagles fan. McNabb pains me to say this. Hall of very good. He is one of those guys, similar to like a Boomer Esiason or a Randall Cunningham, that if Donovan McNabb had won Super Bowl 39, I think he's probably in the Hall of Fame right now because he was one of the better quarterbacks and one of the winningest and most successful consistent quarterbacks for an entire decade but he never won a Super Bowl and his numbers on their own weren't good enough to get in without a Super Bowl ring but if he had that Super Bowl ring on his resume I do think he'd be in but as it stands he doesn't have a Super Bowl so he's not a Hall of Fame player he also was not a great playoff quarterback hi Barry do you believe that Philip Rivers should go into Hall of Fame I said earlier in the video that Frank Gore is kind of like the Philip Rivers of running backs stat wise they're clear Hall of Famers. But I never once watched Philip Rivers and felt like, oh, this is one of the best quarterbacks ever. And that's weird because his numbers were really good. But he was one of those guys that he was so unclutch. He was one of those guys that if you were facing him, you had no fear. Like you wanted him to have the ball in his hands because you knew he was going to fuck it up in the end. And to me, that's not a Hall of Fame player to me. He was so bad in, in clutch time. And I've done an entire video in detail about this that it to me, it does not make him Hall of Fame worthy. Devin Hester. No, 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 no. Not a Hall of Famer. Not even close to a Hall of Famer. Ted Ginn Jr. has more fucking touchdowns than Devin Hester. I do not understand. I've already went on this little rant with Tasker, but Devin Hester, I don't understand. Why does Hester get to leapfrog all these great players who were f every down players? Because he had what? 20 return touchdowns? Like, uh, like, Are return touchdowns worth more than six points? I understand he was the best punt returner ever and he did affect field position. I get that. But I'm sorry. He was not an every down player. He was a terrible receiver and being the best punt returner ever is, I don't know, it just, it, it doesn't move the needle for me. He's not a Hall of Famer. I always say this, would you rather have the best punt returner in the league or the 10th best receiver in the league on your team? Everybody would say, well, I'd rather have the 10th best receiver. It's similar when it comes to the Hall of Fame. Yes, Hester might be the best punt returner ever, but there are still about 100 or 150 receivers in NFL history that were more valuable overall than he was and better than he was who deserved to be in the Hall of Fame over him. So no. Terry Porter.
Porter, two-time All-Star, over 15,000 points. Similar to Chauncey Billups, very respectable player, very good player, had one or two great years. Hall very good, not a Hall of Famer. Despite retiring early, do you think Luke Keekley is still a Hall of Famer? He's in that Sterling Sharp kind of range where he didn't play for very long, but he was very, he was so dominant when he did play that yes, he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. I, be, I believe he was a Hall of Fame player. I think he's basically almost similar to Patrick Willis, although I think Willis was a slightly better player. Willis will make the Hall of Fame and deserves to make the Hall of Fame. I think Keekley is in the same boat. Randall Cunningham, one of the first true dual threat quarterback. Hall of very good, not a Hall of Famer. And the reason I say that is because he took so many sacks and he never won anything. And the biggest, re he had his chance in 1998 with the Vikings and it's not his fault. It's not his fault mainly that they lost to the Falcons. You can say, you can blame Gary Anderson, but for as exciting as Randall was, he took so many sacks and he had so many bad playoff moments that despite his very good numbers, similar to McNabb and other Hall of very good quarterbacks, he doesn't have that Super Bowl ring on his resume that really would put him over the top so he's he's in the hall of very good for me not a hall of famer russell wilson this is a very popular entry and one that is kind of being discussed now if it's very weird is it possible for somebody to play themselves out of a hall of fame spot because if you look just at russell's seattle career to me he had 10 years of hall of fame caliber play which as a quarterback and he won a super bowl obviously and then he lost another super bowl so he does have the super bowl ring on his resume i think the the player that i saw in seattle was a Hall of Fame quarterback. Obviously, his decline in Denver has been so sudden and unexpected that it may keep him out of the Hall of Fame. I would still say that he is a Hall of Fame quarterback because a decade of quality, consistent quarterback play is very, very rare, but I did not expect him to become as washed up as soon as he did. I don't think anybody did. Marty Schottenheimer. Schottenheimer should be a Hall of Famer despite his bad playoff record. One of the unluckiest coaches of all time. He has 200 wins in the regular season. That to me, he's kind of like Andy Reid if Andy Reid never found Mahomes. Schottenheimer never had, he had Joe Montana, but Montana was like in his late 30s. And ironically enough, that was the one time Schottenheimer or one of the few times Schottenheimer did make a deep playoff run was with an aging Montana as his quarterback. He made a couple of championship games with the Browns as well. And then there was the Elway stuff. He just had Marlon McCree, terrible luck. He, he should be in the Hall of Fame. Matthew Stafford, another difficult one. He has the county stats. He has a Super Bowl ring, but he was a very inconsistent player. I think because he's still playing, I would say my my initial instinct is not a Hall of Famer. But if he's able to somehow win another ring, I think that would put him over the top. Not a Hall of Famer, but a Hall of very good quarterback as it stands right now. Marshawn Lynch. You look at Lynch's stats, he just over 10,000 yards, 85 rushing touchdowns. He has some of the best playoff stats ever as well, which I don't think he's a Hall of Famer running back but I do think I do think he might get in because he does have Super Bowl ring and he was a massive part of the Seahawks prominence in the early 2010s but the, the raw counting stats you know he doesn't have those amazing he doesn't have enough raw counting stats to me to get in um, but he was but he was he was a better running back than Frank Gore for example but he didn't have any dominant season despite some dominant runs he didn't have those dominant seasons like I think he's a worse version of Derrick Henry not a Hall of Famer. Jimmy Graham was in the argument for best tight end for a few years. Jimmy Graham, not a Hall of Famer. Had he played or stayed in New Orleans longer, been with Drew Brees, who knows, maybe he would have had a couple more dominant seasons, but his post-Saints career was not the best, so he's not a Hall of Famer. Hall of very good, though. DeMar DeRozan, Hall of very good. Regular season-wise, you could argue he's a Hall of Famer because he's a consistent regular season performer. If he had played in the 80s or 90s, he definitely would be in the Hall of Famer right now. He probably still will make the Hall of Fame because like I say, the Basketball Hall of Fame standards are ridiculous, but he is such a terrible playoff former. Does he deserve to be a Hall of Famer? To me, it's kind of like, again, going back to the Phil Rivers thing, if you're rooting against, if you're playing against him, it's like, I want this guy to have the ball in his hands because I know he's going to fuck up late in the game. And to me, it's just not a Hall of Famer. Kyle Lowry, very similar to DeRozan, although Lowry has a ring because he was on that Raptors team. He's famous for having a fat ass. I think Lowry 
similar. He's in that Chauncey Billups tier. Hall of very good. Was never a straight up superstar. We're not talking about a guy like to me. I think if you're a Hall of Famer, you need to be. If it was up to me, I would say the Hall of Fame for point guard should be reserved for the best of the best of the best. You know, Magic and Oscar and Steph and Steve Nash and all these guys, like these top tier players. Kyle Lowry, very, very good player. Not a Hall of Famer. Todd Helton. I believe, yes, I think that Todd Helton should get in the Hall of Fame, even though there is some question as to how good he was because, well, you know, he played the Coors Field shit. 316 career batting average, 414 career on base percentage, OPS plus of 133. Larry Walker is in the Hall of Fame and he played a lot of his prime in Colorado. So I think Helton will eventually get in the Hall of Fame and deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Also former teammate of Peyton Manning when he was playing at Tennessee. Derek Rose, not a Hall of Famer. The only reason Derek Rose even gets into these discussions is because he won a pity MVP from the media who was pissed at LeBron for going to Miami at the time. Rose had three good years, one or two great years, and then he got hurt and he was never the same. He's not a Hall of Famer. And I'm even considering the Basketball Hall of Fame's low standards. I don't even know if he'll get in. He might be the first MVP to not make the Basketball Hall of Fame. And honestly, considering who he is off the court, it's probably deserved. Not probably, it is deserved. Not a Hall of Famer. Matt Ryan. I made a video about this. By this, I mean Matt Ryan's career in depth a couple years ago. And I said he was a Hall of Famer, but I've really been thinking about it. And I said, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to say Philip Rivers isn't a Hall of Famer and Matt Ryan is because they're very similar in the sense that God, they just they just find ways to fuck it up. And that Matt Ryan always had terrible defenses. Hall of very good. And I know the Super Bowl collapse wasn't all on him, but it's just God damn it, bro. Why did you have to blow a 20 to 3 lead? And then obviously you blow a 33 to nothing lead in the regular season with the Colts. He has the stats. He has an MVP. He was obviously agonizingly close to getting a Super Bowl and a Super Bowl MVP as well, but it slipped through his fingers. The guy just, he found ways to lose games. And I, I've had a change of heart on Matt Ryan, a Hall of Very Good quarterback. If he had a Super Bowl ring, if he had hung on to win Super Bowl 51, he would be a Hall of Famer to me. But guess what? He didn't win it, so he's not. Kurt Schilling, massive douchebag, massive piece of shit. Is he a Hall of Fame pitcher? Yes. Based on what he did on the field as a baseball player, Kurt Schilling should be in the Hall of Fame, especially for his postseason resume. He's one of the best postseason pitchers of all time. Won a couple World Series. You know, they got racist and they got all this other shit in the Baseball Hall of Fame. I believe as a player, he should be in the Hall of Fame, but as a human being, he's a massive piece of shit. Jose Altuve. I hate Altuve as a Yankees fan because, you know, cheating stuff aside, he's always just been thorn in the Yankees side, especially in the playoffs. But you look at his numbers, he's a career 300 hitter. He has a chance to finish his career maybe with 3,000 hits. He's just over 2,000 right now. I don't think he'll get to 3,000, but he's won three batting titles. He's won couple World Series. I think as long as he's not caught with PEDs or anything, that he will make the Hall of Fame. Chandler Jones. See, Chandler Jones is interesting. Chandler Jones, to me, if you had asked me this question two months ago, I would have said he was a sneaky Hall of Fame worthy player. Because if you look at Chandler Jones' numbers, his numbers are, are surprisingly really, really good. 112 career sacks. He does have a Super Bowl. He's got a couple first team all pros, but he's basically had a complete mental breakdown and I don't know what the fuck go is going on with him. So he He's not going to make the Hall of Fame anymore, but if he had continued to, I mean, who knows if he has some sort of second wind if he comes back. I don't know if he'll ever play again in the NFL, but as it currently stands, he was right on the cusp, I think, of getting enough numbers to be in the Hall of Fame, but I don't think that's going to happen anymore. Was he a Hall of Fame caliber player? Yes. Will he make the Hall of Fame? No. Sean Payton. I think Sean Payton, tough one. He's got the Super Bowl, obviously, but he's had a ton of playoff collapses. He has several seven and nine seasons with the first bout Hall of Fame quarterback. You know, for all the shit Belichick gets about not winning anything without Brady, at least when Belichick did have a great quarterback, all he did was win. Peyton had a great quarterback who was just as good, if not slightly, maybe a tick worse than Brady and wasted him. So for the most part, my gut is to say not a Hall of Famer and he might be coaching himself out of the Hall of Fame with his Denver tenure now. He would, to me, he would be in the Hall of Very Good. I don't think he's as good as guys like Mike Holmgren and Mike Shanahan who are not in the Hall of Fame as coaches. Cam Jordan, a Another very sneaky Hall of Fame type career. Cam Jordan, eight Pro Bowls, one first team All Pro, 116 and a half career sacks. I think that to me, and he still seems to have some juice left in the tank. The only thing missing from his resume is, you know, Super Bowl, which is for a defensive end is really not important. But I think if he plays a couple more years, gets 125, 130 career sacks, he's, I think he's, he's going to be a Hall of Fame. He deserves to be a Hall of Famer. Do you think Vic Bel 
belongs in the hall. Uh, Michael Vick? No. Michael Vick, one of the most exciting players ever. And this is this is putting aside the fact that he tortured and murdered dogs. One of the most exciting players ever, putting aside all the off-field shit that he did, which is kind of a big deal. Putting all that aside, you look at his numbers, no way. Not nearly enough numbers. Didn't win anything. Made one conference championship game. His numbers as a passer outside of a couple years with Philly were really mediocre. Massively influential player. Not a Hall of Fame player by any stretch of the imagination. Can Shohoi Otani go to the Hall of Fame? Well, of course he can. He can buy a ticket. I think it's free for anybody to go to Cooperstown. But on a serious note, as long as Otani stays healthy, he is a Hall of Fame player. He are, he might be the best baseball player ever. Ever. I mean, he's one of the best hitters. He's an elite pitcher when he is pitching. You know, the problem is he hasn't won anything. But again, in baseball, it's kind of like, you know, baseball is basically an individual sport disguised as a team sport. So he's one of the best players I've ever seen. He is a Hall of Fame caliber player. The question now is, will he have enough of a sample size in his career to make it to the Hall of Fame? That's the only thing. But on a per game basis, on a per season basis, he is a Hall of Fame player. And finally, Tom Brady, fuck no.